in World Extreme Cage Fighting. Paulo Filio and Chael Sonnen going at it at the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas. What a battle this was. It was Chael Sonnen who really dominated the entire fight. He was able to escape, he was able to punish, and it looked like Paulo Filio was gonna go down. He had no shot, but he is so good on the ground at jiu-jitsu, and this was the turning point. Chael Sonnen says he just yelled. The official said, no, you tap, and that's how it went down. Let the attack begin. The rematch is on, but perceived lack of discipline is fueling one fighter's dream, and another fighter is left to defend his actions inside and out of the cage. He can't be rewarded for negative behavior. He said he'd do something and he didn't do it, and I, I have to more than ever uh, find a way uh, to bring him down tonight. Never did I uh, disregard uh, not making weight to fight him. Uh, I've accepted the fight at 185 pounds. I was planning to fight and defend my belt at 185 pounds. Unfortunately, I was unable to make weight. It's not acceptable uh, to miss weight due to a lack of discipline. 192 and a half for Filio. At the same time, I also gave my word. And it is not acceptable for me to back out. I felt that the way that he reacted uh, towards me when I was stepping on the scale has made me react in a way that's given me even more motivation to go out there and do what I was planning to do. I'm gonna go out there and beat him. My heart's broken, okay? I came here to win the championship. This is my life's dream, is to fight for the world title and win it, okay? I promised my father on his deathbed I would win the world title. This is my chance, and it's not gonna happen. He had his opportunity, he tapped, said that he didn't, and this is his second opportunity. And unfortunately, I wasn't able to make weight. I tried, I wasn't able to do it, but I would feel a lot worse if this was the first time. I'm looking to shut him down. I'm looking to close the book on Paulo Filo. He will leave this arena tonight 16 and one, and I will beat him. I don't know if Paulo Filho was injured. Uh, you know, an injury could occur, you know? Who knows? But test me, no matter what he says, he was able to show up and fight. So none of those excuses are gonna matter to Chael Sonnen. Right now, he did everything he was supposed to do. He prepared for this battle, and he showed up. And now, even through a victory, he is never, he is impossible for him to walk out of that cage with the title. And that's just a crime, you know? That's, that's just, you know, what he's supposed to do. As Chael Sonnen enters the cage, you got to look at his Bud Light fighter profile. He is a complete package. A guy who is a former Division I wrestling champion at the University of Oregon, and he has all kinds of motivation tonight for Paulo Filio.
Well, there he is. He is the reigning middleweight champion of the WEC, but not without some controversy. Weighing in at 189 pounds, so he was a good four to five pounds over where he should be, unable to make the weight. But you know what? Chael Sonnen says, we're here. Let's do it anyways. As we take a look at our Bud Light fighter profile, Bud Light, the difference is drinkability. Now, a lot of people here are hostile towards Paulo Filo tonight, but he does bring a lot of talent when he gets in the cage. Well, he's a champ for a reason. I mean, undefeated, he's fought some phenomenal, phenomenal fighters. I mean, 16 and 0, did everything, did very well in pride. Uh, it's just that his, his uh, um, conduct as the champion is just not what people wanted to look forward to. People feel that Chael Sonnen was in very good control of, of that last fight and that he had barely got caught, you know, he did get caught by the armbar, but up to that point, Chael Sonnen was winning the fight. And now here's an opportunity for him maybe to go ahead and challenge the uh, champion, but with Paul Ophelio not making weight, no title on the line. So a middleweight bout now scheduled for just three rounds. No belt will exchange hands. Paolo Filio checking in 30 years of age. There is the height, and we already discussed the weight. Chael Sonnen, 31 years of age, 6'1", 184 and a half trim pounds, and a 74-inch reach. As Frank pointed out, the last fight was dominated through two rounds by Chael Sonnen, but it's the finish that counts. We now go inside the cage. Joe Martinez will have our fighter's official introductions. And here we go, ladies and gentlemen. This non-title attraction is scheduled for three rounds in the middleweight division. Brought to you by Tap Out, an expression of combat known worldwide. Arrogant, in your face, and American. Also in association with the dark custom world of a Harley Davidson. And here we go, ladies and gentlemen, introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner, is a Bali Tudo fighter. Standing six feet one, he weighed in officially 184 and one half pounds. As a professional, his record outstanding with 22 victories, nine defeats, and one bout even. He fights out of West Lynn, Oregon. Here is Chase. Next is opponent across the cage, fighting out of the red corner. His style, judo and Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Standing five feet, eight inches tall, he weighed in officially 189 pounds even. As a professional, he enters the cage tonight perfect in 16 professional bouts. Hailing from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, he is the undefeated WEC middleweight champion of the world. Referee in charge of the action, Jorge Ortiz. Okay, guys, we went over the rules. I want to remind you, protect yourself at all times. I want a clean fight. Back to your corners. Back it up. Back it up. Good luck. So this is the middleweight bout part two between Chael Sonnen and Paulo Field. Many people thought it was business unfinished tonight. Many people here feel like they've got a sour taste You're in their ready? mouth, but they're going to fight nonetheless. Up. We're scheduled Go. for three rounds. You know, last fight, uh, the fight was definitely dominated on its feet by uh, Chael Sonnen. It'll be interesting to see what the champ, uh, Paulo Filio, has done to uh, close that gap. That fight coming almost a year ago on the 12th of December of 07. And as you look back on that, Chael Sonnen did pretty much what he was doing now. He controlled the ground game. He's a, he's a great Division I wrestler. Well-accomplished wrestler. Very well-rounded as a fighter. The only area that uh, he ever sometimes still has a little bit of a problem with is the submission area. But uh, he's fighting world-class fighters, so no shame there. But his uh, wrestling, and, and I think his striking is very effective. I like his hands with those good straight punches. Uh, he, Paulo Filho is going to have a hard time taking him down from this position. I mean, he's he got lived a lot of his life. Yeah, here he's sprawling. Not only that, see how he's breaking down Paulo's base. He's not allowing him to get his knees underneath by constantly um, pushing on the knees, holding the ankles. He's got a front headlock attempt. He's going here and pushing stuff in the head. 
you know, Paul Field comes in here and he does not have the crowd on his side. Chael Sonnen definitely motivated and being overweight technically by five pounds, so you question his condition. Oh, definitely. I'm gonna find it hard to believe that, uh, excellent. That's the question I've been answering. Is Chael Sonnen, when, <laughs> when Paul Field's on his back, is he gonna engage him or back away? I'm hoping he backs away and gets his fight back up to his feet again. Well, there's no questioning the conditioning of Chael Sonnen. He looks fit, he looks trim, and he looks extremely motivated. Talked to him for just five minutes, and this fight, regardless of whether the belt comes over to his side, this is cliche, but this is personal. It is. He's angry about the situation. He feels disrespected by Paulo Filho, by him not showing up on weight, ready to do the battle under the contracted weight, because at this point, there's nothing they could have done. The Athletic Commission will not allow this to be a title fight unless both competitors are at the agreed weight class. So by Apollo not, you know, whatever happened, by him not showing up on weight, he took What's that he opportunity away from Chael Sonnen. Apollo Field, many people may think this is being very passive. He's being very uh, non-confrontational, but this is this is how he lures fighters in. He, he does. Last time this how he won the fight. Exactly. Chael Sonnen jumped in on top of him and got caught with an arm. Again, I don't know why he's even beginning to play this game here. Because on the stand-up game, Chael Sonnen's going to dominate. Yeah. Here he's, you know, uh, pa pa Paulo Filio has a strong uh, submissions. And to sit here in his half guard like this is, is taking a chance. Backing out is extremely smart. Uh, also, too, staying here, he, he's risking the chance of taking an up kick. Yeah. Or even a kick to the knee the wrong way. Could, uh, you know... Well, folks, UFC 91, Randy the Natural Couture versus Brock Lesnar for the UFC World Heavyweight Championship. That's Saturday, November 15th at the MGM Grand Garden Arena. No. It's only on pay-per-view, 10 p.m. in the East, 7 p.m. in the West. Go to 91.ufc.com for more information. Frank, you know Brock Lesnar well, someone that you were able to defeat. How do you see that one going down quickly? Uh, not quickly at all. <laughs> <laughs> And I have a feeling, speaking of uh, not quickly. You know, Brock Lesnar is a powerful, powerful guy. Oh, but yes. at the same time, I've learned, like everybody else, I've never bet against Randy Couture. So, What's the name? What's uh, against I'm the name? I'm going to sit down and watch like everybody else. Power and experience. Speaking of not doing anything quickly, I, I think Chael Sonnen is so angry, he wants to drag this thing out. I think he knows and feels he's going to be able to beat him. And look at this. Like a praying man as Paulo Filio almost catches him. Lured him in. I mean, I know people are angry at Paulo Filho, but let's not forget, he is a well-accomplished black belt in jiu-jitsu. Uh, he wins his fights with submissions and with great ground control. Uh, if, if Chael Sonnen, no matter what, in shape, out of shape, makes a mistake, Paulo Filho could catch him. If Chael Sonnen just backs up right here, he has Jorge to Ortiz up. is going to make make him stand up. He yeah. up all, get up. I don't, I don't understand really what uh, Chael Sonnen is doing, but obviously I wasn't in his camp, so... Uh, you know, is this a strategy? Because right now, I mean, he's winning the fight by doing this. And I agree with you. Those up kicks as we approach 20 seconds to go here in, in round number one. one. You catch him on the knee the wrong side, you, you blow out your knee. Yeah, but at the same time, he's not able to push the pace like this. You would think that you'd want to bring Apollo's conditioning into question. And Paulo is sitting on his hip like this. He's not getting tired. Maybe Chael is trying to lure him out, get him so frustrated taking these shots that he's going to say, stand up and fight me like a man. The fans don't like it. We come back, round number two from Hollywood, Florida. Back inside the Seminole Hard Rock in Hollywood, Florida. This is World Extreme Cage Ready? Fighting only on versus Todd Harris along with the champ Frank Mir. We are in round number two of this middleweight bout scheduled for three rounds. Quickly give you the update. These two men met 11 months ago. Chael Sonnen on the left in the white trunks really dominated the fight, but was caught in the end in a controversial tap. They had the rematch. It was scheduled for a belt, but the defending champion, Paulo Filo, unable to make weight, came in well over five pounds, and so this cannot be a title fight because it is not within the weight restrictions. There you have the background. Chael Sonnen came prepared to take that title, and now he will not get a chance. Again, I don't know why Chael Sonnen doesn't play this game. Jab, jab, right here. straight left hand, and back, back out. If you hurt him, you can come in with maybe an uppercut, or the, you know, because that way in case... Jab, feel your way in, 
stay safe and fire that left hand, the number two, right down the pipe. And I like your theory about, about questioning Palofilo's conditioning here. Push the pace. Let's yeah. find out exactly what he's got under the hood. Wow. That, I mean, we know the jail can do that, but he just helped out Colon. Colon's going to keep that guard closed. He's not going to open up. Chell needs to back out. There he goes. Back out. Stand walk away. There you go. That's what we and want to see. And says, thank, thank you. Wow. Nice. Did he anticipate the shoot or what? Stand up again. Look at back that. Stand, stand up. Back it up and stand him up. He can do that until this fight ends. Not the most exciting thing for the fans here, but I'll tell you what, it seems like retribution is coming Paulo Filo's way in the form of Chael Sonnen's fist. Yeah, Chael Sonnen can keep doing a stand-up strike. You know. Filo shoot, not quick enough. I mean, Chael just... Well, even if it was fast, he's not... You know, You're going up against the Division Sonnen, one National. Yeah, yeah wrestling, it's going to sprawl on him. You know, shooting on him, he has a chance, you know, it'd be like, you know, at the same time, it'd be like if Chael Sonnen was trying to uh, throw a triangle on Paulo Filo. You know, that's each one's respective strength in their world. Uh, Chael Sonnen can just bounce around on his toes, jab, jab, cross. And then uh, when he sees uh, a lull, he can go ahead and throw that... Uh, Back away. And Chael Sonnen is getting some great coaching from his corner. They said walk him to the cage and drop him and then back him away, and that's exactly what he did. Uh, Chael Sonnen needs to be a little more confident with his ability to throw that punch. He's starting to close the uh, right eye of Paulo Field. You can see there he's already blinking, some blood flow into it. Keep throwing a few more jabs, you can close that eye, and then when the straight left comes he's to that side it. of the face, he's never going to see it. And like they say, it's the old adage, it's a punch you don't see, it hurts real bad. <laughs> no, just keep doing this, you can put on the boxing clip. Paulo Filio needs to figure out a way to get, to get this ground and fight to the ground. He's not going to win a striking match here. Well, once he, he's got to be successful getting to the ground and keeping it to the ground. So he hasn't been able to do thus far. No, I mean, he jumped guard. He shot some singles. The singles have been nullified by a tail. Uh, the ju guard jump action, even though, you know, the crowd boo is not a bad idea. If I have to take down the wrestler, a wrestler of Chael Sonnen's uh, uh, a pedigree, it's easier to jump guard and get him to the ground than to try to actually shoot a shot. If you're just joining us, round number one, a different kind of round where Chael Sonnen did engage him on the ground. But this one, he has discovered, obviously getting some advice from his corner, stand him back up. He cannot handle your, your striking game and uh, awkward hold there. But as we approach 45 seconds to go here, round number two, this one's scheduled for three. Chael Sonnen clearly in control. He is, he's controlling this. Uh, I think everybody would like to see him maybe get a little more uh, bloodthirsty. Chael Sonnen doing an excellent job of listening to his corner there. Yeah. There he's throwing jabs. He wants to come in. He wants to engage him, but he's, yeah. he's listening to his corner. They're telling him to back up. You know, that's more his game. The ground and pound, the take you down. But, uh... I, I think this is a smart play on his part, because Paulo Filo, I think, is just the pace is starting to wear on him. Yep, he just needs to keep the jab in his face, throwing left hands down the middle. And I would still go ahead and throw some heavy leg kicks because you know what? He has that kind of takedown defense. So we will see a third and final round. Getting set, getting final advice for the third and final round. Frank, take us through round two. Here, that was a great leg kick. He set it up, threw the kick right on the static nerve. It was a great shot. Here, you know, Paula Field is pulling guard. How is he supposed to try to get Chael Sonnen down? But Chael Sonnen made him pay for it. His corner talked him into it, told him to come over, slam him down, and then he did the right thing and backed right back out. Seconds out. Ultimo round. Last round. Jorge Ortiz telling both fighters this is the last round. Can you imagine if this was a title fight? We'd be going five Ready? instead Ready? of three. Stop. But as it stands, this is the third and final round. Paulo Filio in the black trunks. Chael Sutton of Oregon in the black with the white trim. 
Jeff Sonnen just needs to watch out for any big shots. You know, so far, Paulo and Filo hasn't thrown a single straight punch. They all have been looping overhand rights, looping left hooks. So he just needs to keep paying attention to that. But if you throw something down the middle, you don't get hit with a hook if you put a straight punch in someone's chin. Folks, on December 3rd, we're back in the cage for WEC Bantamweight Championship between Miguel Angel Torres, who hasn't lost in five years, and number one undefeated contender, Manny Tappy. That's December 3rd, only on Versus. It, it, it's not exciting, it's not sexy, but it's effective. Yeah, you know, Chael Sonnen, you know, almost, you know, he's fighting safe, he's, he's gonna win this fight, you know? Um, Last time he fought too aggressive and got caught in an armbar. Right. This time I think he's not aggressive enough. It would be nice to see him go out there and go for blood. But you know what? He has, you know, it's, it's his career. He wants to get the win at the end. This is a smart thing to do. It's selfish for me as a fan to want him to go out there and try to go ahead and put it all on the line. See, I, I, he should just, he should back away. Insult. Just back away. Back away. Back up. away. And he's not listening to us. Todd, why is he not listening to us? Who is Paulo Filo talking to? Uh -huh. He's talking to someone. Now, he doesn't speak English, so he's Portuguese. And I don't know if Chael Sonnen is that first. If Chael Sonnen jumps into his guard Biggest and gives up an arm bar, yeah. I'm going to go attack him at the cage before he leaves. <laughs> Chael Sonnen has dominated this fight by virtue of doing this, not falling into the trap. You don't want to get on the ground with Paul Feely. Make him do what he's uncomfortable doing. You know, a nice uppercut would be good too, right about now, jab. Throw the left uppercut right up there, you know, with his left hand. I think the fans want to see a flurry. Yeah, throw something. Well, where's the knee? Man, Chael Sutton has some great foundation to build upon. He just adds a little more uh, explosiveness, and this guy is going to be just one force to, re to reckon with. And Apollo, again, just, you know, I, it's what happens when you show up that overweight. You can tell his condition is a factor. I mean, I've been there, guys. I know what it feels like to be in a fight and be completely gassed. You didn't prepare for it. And uh, Apollo is just knowing how that feels right now. It's a good thing this wasn't a five round fight. Well, the fans here in Hollywood, Florida, thought they were going to a cage fight and a boxing match broke out. But Chael Sonnen, he is being a tactician. Yeah, he's not even throwing hard right there. He's just tapping away. Sharp shooting. But when was the last time Paulo Filo made any kind of an advancement, any kind of aggressive move, no. any kind of attack? He's so open for an uppercut, it's not even funny. I mean, he is just the version of rope dope but he's just Rocky Balboa standing and walking into it. Yeah, Chael Sonnen has an easy win right now. He knows it. and. Uh, if this was for a title, I would agree right now with his fighting strategy because, hey, you know what? You get your title, whatever it takes. But a uh, non-title fight, I don't know. Well, I'll tell you what What it does set up, folks, is it sets up a lot of people pushing Paulo Filio to get into weight. Oh, by all means. And Chael Sunningham, get after it, and let's put a belt on the line. Exactly. Paulo, get, get it together and bring the belt and put the belt on the line. The fans here are booing Chael Sonnen. No, Paulo Filo's not doing anything. He hasn't, he hasn't thrown a punch, he hasn't shot, he hasn't done anything whatsoever. And the fans that came to see this Who is he looking at? He is looking to the side. I am, this has just been one interesting from the minute. A nice elbow. He, he can throw a knee though. I know he doesn't want to take it down, but I don't see uh Paulo Field taking it down. He, nice, look, nice. he is just not. He is so out of this right now. Out of it's gassed, or he just has no desire. And just said, you know what, I'll show up, I'll fight you. But you know what? There ha we don't know this from being in the position we, we are. are. But there's some personal things going on with Paulo Field. Who's he looking at? I, I feel like we're watching the movie with uh, Woody Harrelson. He's like talking to Jesus or something in the middle of the ring. Is, is, who's in there talking to him? I don't know what he is doing. This is an absolutely baffling performance by Paulo Filio. Chael Sonnen, Chael Sonnen with 10 seconds to go is going to finish with a flurry. This is the third and final round, and Sonnen has absolutely dominated, and Paulo Filio still does not know what is going on. And that's it.
inside a very restless Seminole Hard Rock in Hollywood, Florida, the conclusion of our bout between that man, Chael Sonnen, and Paulo Filio. It went three rounds. We now go inside the cage. Joe Martinez has the official word from our judges. Ladies and gentlemen, for three rounds inside the cage, we go to the scorecards. All three judges scoring at the same 30 to 27 for your winner by unanimous decision. The fighting pride of West Lynn, Oregon, Chael Sonnen! I don't know who I'm talking about.